Okay, going to do a lot of recording today because uh, later today we have Delta Bowl uh, number seven. But first we have Addy vs. Turds, which is a really cool match to, you know, have as our opener of the day. Addy went with this 8765 and 7654 focused hand. You can see the two cards on board that are red were the remaining two cards in his hand. He opened in five with 5678. And I don't think 8765s are right on this rule set. I think there aren't enough nines to target. But I've often thought that in the past. When I played um, Seto in Clan League this year, um, I thought it was a rule set with no nine nines allowed in level 8. So I went 8864s and 8862s. And he went 8765s, and I was incredibly lucky to find a move to survive. I was in a ton of trouble that game. So they always have more power than I expect them to, and I think they're very good cards, I just think they drop off when they don't hit nines. And it may be that's just not true and they're dynamic and useful on every set. They just seem like they shouldn't be that much better than 8764s in split level sets, but maybe they just are, I don't know. So he starts with 5, 6, 7, 8, and 5, and Turds did send me a message after that, or basically when that move was made, saying he thought Addy had a, a left issue. And especially after that card is used, Addy only has sixes facing the left. And I wasn't really sure how Turds should try to go at this, because if you look at Turds' hand and you look at his rightward numbers, um, 8962 is really well covered by the 8765s. 9628 is incredibly well covered. They have sames or pluses against any six to the right. 6457 is little play. It seemed like 5764 should be the answer. Thought there were a few different squares maybe it could play. Um, I thought you might be able to do two or eight, one or seven. There were a bunch of options. Turds went for one, which seems very logical. Uh, 6457 now has a same or plus in both two or four. And uh, Addy has no capture available from two and had limited captures available from 4. 7, 5, 4, 6 had a plus there. 7, 8, 5, 6 is the overpower, uh, as well as a plus wall on 5. But limited play in 4 and not much play in 2. No plus walls in 2 on 5. That's that's pretty useful, I think, for turds. Now, Addy has gone. Um, Addy has gone in 9, which certainly sets up 7, 8, 5, 6 to look really good. My instinct as turds right now would be to go in one of the side squares, not one of the remaining corners. And specifically, it would be block a square that Addy has play in and try to incentivize leaving open a square Addy will not have play in later. So instinctively, um, 8962 in four looks like a move to me with the point that it is safe to combo play um it makes addy have kind of seven eight five six as his card for every square which might seem good because it means just keep that for the last card and it'll hit a square it's good in but also can be something where it is overworked and the other cards can't find a square and I would be trying to argue it's overworked. Um, and specifically that the last square I'd let it play in is 7. And hmm, I guess you have to play 6, 2, 8, 9, and 8 as your final move for it to only have one capture. And that doesn't flip anything. So maybe that's not a very strong plan. But I would be thinking you want to block 1 of 4, 6, or 8. But four is not that important to block. So maybe you just want to block six or eight. I was thinking it's useful to lock in two, but maybe that shouldn't be the goal here. Maybe the goal should be to, to cut their combo squares as much as possible. It is a shame that Ifrit has so little play if you're, if you're turds here. Um, maybe you can do six, two, eight, nine, and six. Uh, if Addy ever captures, you always have 6, 4, 5, 7 comboing back any card he plays in 3, because all his cards have a 6 to the left. And this can actually be an interesting effect of exploiting um, someone having a left weakness, or trying to. Specifically, redundancy. Not necessarily a weakness, but redundancy. 
is if you notice they're really redundant facing a direction, you might start, say, on the left because they don't have any numbers higher than a 6 going left, but you might also play on the right because if you play in the right row and the middle column starts filling and you can punish those 6s to the left, you get to play to the left of them and they won't have a card that they're able to put in the center that is safe to whatever you can do to the left of it. And I think 6, 2, 8, 9, and 6 sort of aims at that, right? It says my 6, 4, 5, 7 absolutely dominates anything you can put in 3. Now it doesn't dominate anything you can put in 2, but I can keep a second card in hand for that. I am the second turn player. And as long as I keep Ifrit in hand, uh, 9, 6, 2, 8, and he has gone for it. As long as I keep Ifrit in hand, that controls cards you'd play in two. Um, six, four, five, seven controls the four, four, seven, six. Ifrit controls the other two cards. Again, redundancy. It is easier to have one card fulfill multiple duties. So this is probably a somewhat difficult position for Addy. I think the obvious thing to do is to go in eight, but that is difficult. And Turd's probably spotted this as well. I didn't get to it yet. Of because any of the 7, 8, 5, 6s are comboed by 9, 6, 2, 8, um, it is easy for turds to lock in the card in 9 if Addy goes for the Q, which makes it difficult to go there, though you still have to calculate it out. And another thing in turds' favor there um, is the elemental helps turds, right? If the elemental was an 8 rather than 7, and turds had the plus wall in 7, then if he was comboed, it could combo everything back. On the other hand, um, so say you start with 5, 8, 7, 6, and 8. If turds combos 9, 6, 2, 8, and 7, any combo on 5 flips stuff back. So you could go 7, 8, 5, 6, and 4, but that loses to 6, 4, 5, 7, and 2, and Addy has no combo at the end, and I believe loses 6, 4 there. Looks like 6, 4 to me. If you start with 7, 8, 5, 6, do you get a better version? 7, 8, 5, 6, and 8. But then the problem is you're not comboing back anything. So I think like if you start with um, 7, 8, 5, 6, and 8, you flip two cards. Um, the score is currently 7 to 3, so it would become 5, 5. If Turds plays 9, 6, 2, 8, and 7, he flips back two cards. It becomes 5, 5. Sorry, it becomes 7-3 again. Um, Addy will have the card in 5 and the cards in his hand. Addy can then play 5, 8, 7, 6, and 4. That doesn't, yeah, take enough. Okay. Because for Turds' final move, he will play 8, 9, 6, 2, and 2, um, going back up 7-3, and Addy will only be able to capture one back. So it looks to me like 8 is not working. Now, I think the more likely move, sort of from the start, was something like four, four, seven, six, and four, um, saying my eight, seven, six, fives are going to be sweepers. Um, my eight, seven, uh, my seven, eight, five, six will necessarily flip more cards on the bottom than you flip of mine, and my five, eight, seven, six will necessarily flip more on the top. I am currently down seven, three, so that should get a tie unless some of my extra flips are on. Five, in which case sometimes it won't add up to more. But I think four, four, seven, six in four is most likely to be the answer. I think one is pretty unlikely, it's just met by six, four, five, seven, and two. But I like the idea of four, four, seven, six. Um, Turds has nothing he can put in two that five, eight, seven, six can't take from three due to the elemental. If Turds goes in three. Ah, uh, I guess turds can go in three. Yeah, four, four, seven, six, and four, nine, six, two, eight, exactly in three should not be met by five, eight, seven, six, and two. That makes it six, four, but it can be met by eight, nine, six, two, and eight, the only card we don't have combo play against, going back up seven, three. However, against nine, six, two, eight, in three, Maybe you can play 7, 8, 5, 6, and 2. That's going to flip two cards. You're going to go up 5, 5, and he plays it. 
and 6, 4, 5, 7 in 8, your 5, 8, 7, 6 can't take. Your 7, 8, 5, 6 could have due to the plus wall. And Addy finds it. A very nice find by Addy, I think. Checking the chats. <clears throat> one thing, uh, obviously I'm pretty down on Elemental, but one thing about it is because my AI can't do it, I can't go, eh, don't want to figure this out, let's just have the AI tell me. And that's a little refreshing because I think that is a pretty bad habit I've fallen into. And like, I should evaluate and then have it tell me where I was wrong. Not kind of go like, I'm halfway through evaluating, eh, this seems like work. Let's just press a button. And with Elemental, I cannot. It also, however, means like with my match against Zelda, I couldn't, you know, I can't go back now and see if, if or where I made mistakes. Hmm. I think this is a tie. I think this is a tie. Specifically because 6, 4, 5, 7 has no capture of 5 and 8. If it was temporarily became 7, 4, 5, 7, uh, I, th I believe this would be a win for turds. But I believe this is a tie. Very interesting which squares the elemental landed in. Like, it always feels like a little unfair and arbitrary because I just... I don't think people are... I don't think people are understanding the implications early enough for the results not to be somewhat randomized by it. But it does create interesting spots, like this one. Like this one. By using 6, 2, 8, 9, turds does not have his card safe in 8, 2, 7, 8, 5, 6, but those two cards are so good. Getting the game side to side was really smart of Addy. Like, seeing, like, this should be a Z, not a Q, not something else. It has to be a side to side game for my cards to be good. I want, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that if he hadn't gone in 9 on move 3, he would have gone in 6 to create that more side to side game, rather than going somewhere like 8. Because I think this hand would have fallen apart, um relatively quickly in an up-down game, but in a side-to-side -side game, really did good play. And that might mean that Turds should have gone in two or eight on his on his on the second move of the game, Turds' first move. I think there's a real argument that if you look at these cards, they're gonna perform a lot better side to side. We can see how good sweepers they are. They do need some help from the elementals here, but they are very powerful sweepers in this kind of position. In general, I think 8765 type cards, cards with high dynamism, low total power, are better first turn than second turn. Um, and the reason for that is they can sweep in spots like this, but they are unlikely to be the cards that stop the opponent from sweeping because they can't put the most difficult numbers to take facing out, right? So they're very good at sweeping. They're not as good at stopping sweeps. I think this is also true of 8876s on level 10 and uh, various other cards. Uh, six, six, three, twos. Again, seven, six, three, twos. <clears throat> um, yeah. But I believe this is a tie. I haven't checked a line yet that convinced me otherwise. And possibly turds has to be careful here. It's possible there aren't that many ties here. I think you kind of got to go 9, 6, 2, 8, and 3. They get a same off you. That makes it 5, 5. And then you go 6, 4, 5, 7, and 8. And, or 8, 9, 6, 2, and 8. Either way. One of them they can't take. And one of them flips something. That, so you, you know, trade a card. <clears throat> Nicely played by both players. I like this game quite a bit. I think the battle over controlling the sixes to the left was pretty interesting. But I wonder if the battle should have actually been about being an up-down game. 
A lot of hand games is, especially when someone uses a somewhat irregular hand, is how can I construct the game such that the things their irregular hand does really well are not available here. One of the games I'm proudest of playing since the return of the site was, I think, against Yevon. And I met a five starter in four. And I think it was just correctly identifying that the game had to be sideways. I could not let it be up, down, or take on different shapes. It had to be sideways. I also, um, there's another game actually, it was a turds game, where um, I, I think he won it, but he met a starter, all right, this is not the move I expected. Um, So another way to tie. Um, seven, eight, five, six, and seven will flip it, plus wall is on. So that will be six, four. And then I guess Turds' point is nine, six, two, eight, and three. So he's kind of just switching up the order, I think. Um, and if five, eight, seven, six goes in seven, Turds can block two and he, he wins. So I guess a reasonable way to switch up the order gives the opponent a chance to make mistakes. I'm always like, after they go seven, eight, five, six, and uh, seven, and it's six, four, like, it always feels scary to go nine, six, two, eight, and three there, because it just feels like something should flip, right? More than just five, feels like, if I've, if I've not seen something right. Uh, but another trades game, I actually, um, that I checked with the solver afterwards, uh, he met a starter in five and one, I think, and ended up winning the game and had a very strong game. But I had sort of thought he would go in two, and when I checked it afterwards, two was winning. And it was on the same concept of the game needed to be up-down. Uh, and I was making some good calls at that at the start of the return. Haven't been recently. Who can tell if that's me dropping off, which is has happened to some extent, or if that's um, that I just haven't seen five starters much. But I, I'm now thinking... Um, if I had just played this game turds played, which I very easily could have played, five, seven, six, four, and one seemed like a very good idea to me. Six, two, eight, nine, and six was the move I was looking at. I probably would have done a different order of three and eight, but very similar. Um, if I had just played this game, I think my instinct would be if we repeat hands and he repeats the starter, I'm going to play five, seven, six, four, and two. I want to see his hand work up down. Though, the opposing hand has a lot of sevens facing down, and Turds does not have particularly good play against those sevens. Ifrit has some on the right side of the board, but... And right, in fact, in both definitions, both right as in right versus left, and right as in right versus wrong. Which is rarely the case, because the political right is always wrong. Good lesson. Alright, so we get a tie in game one. Really good game, I think. Very well played by both players. Addy is, of course, more known for his closed play, but I think is a very good open player. And yeah, I thought this was a really good game. Turd says, phew, what a move in four that I really should have seen coming. Yeah, Addy did a, a great job. I don't, I'm always like, when you're sent a message, like, and Turds has explicitly said, like when he's thinking, do not send him anything. He wants A, no influences, and B, no distractions. He will turn everything off. Like, you don't want to send him, like, I like daffodils. You know, just nothing. Just don't, he won't, not for him, right? And obviously you don't say things that, like, influence, that you think can influence the game in any way. But sometimes you'll be like, hey, that move looked cool or something like that, right? Like, the move they played, you're like, yeah, that's what I was thinking too, right? Um, and that's probably, like, a tiny bit not okay to say, but feels like it's not going to change the trajectory of the game in any way, and you can, like, continue holding the conversation you were holding. Um, so I don't think I should, for instance, say something like, Addy making the game side to side was really smart, because that's one of them. 
aha, there's an idea there, right? There's a specific uh, praxis being advocated there. But I think I can say it's a great move. And so I shall. Uh, we're presumably waiting for another game to happen. I don't see it in the view games. What I'm going to do, because I have superpowers now, is I'm going to pause the recording and come back when ready for the next game. Fascinating stuff. Well, Turds has made an excellent point looking at this. Um, I miscalculated. He miscalculated. We all miscalculated. Except you, dear viewer. You maybe did not miscalculate. In this Z position, um, my recommended idea actually, I think, worked. 9, 6, 2, 8, and 3. Because if they go 7, 8, 5, 6, and 2, Turds has pointed out, he has 8, 9, 6, 2, and 8, which I had realized flips 5 and thought, thus a 5, 5 tie. But because it flips 5, it combos 4. So it's going to lead uh, 7, 3. Uh, flipping 5 would go 6, 4. Uh, it has the plus and 8. You know, 8 plus 7 equals 9 plus 6. Very difficult math which flips four, and five, eight, seven, six is the last card, only flips back one. On the other hand, uh, perhaps Addy can just go in seven there, presumably with five, eight, seven, six. Um, but six, four, five, seven just flips that. You're up eight, two, and six, four, five, seven is not vulnerable to five. So that just puts you up 8-2. It only flips 2 back. No, I think I think this was a win. I think 9, 6, 2, 8, and 3 before 8 was a win. I didn't see why it was a win. Had the right move, not the right reasoning. Um, would have been very embarrassing, man, to start 9, 6, 2, 8. They go 7, 8, 5, 6, and 2, and you go, eh, doesn't matter which card I play in 8. Let's go 6, 4, 5, 7, and tie with two moves left. The E and five really changing things there because I, I do think I do now think nine six two eight and three was a win. And again, bummer that the solver can't confirm, but we should be able to see it pretty clearly. Nine six two eight and three. If anything goes in seven, Turds is still up seven three. He captures that with six four five seven. He goes up eight two, and there's nothing to a combo. The card in two flips three and five, making it six four. But the card in 5 does not flip 8, because 7 minus 1 does not beat 6, and 4 was never flipped, so the combo doesn't go through 4. Um, so I do think 3 was a win here, but difficult game to calculate, and uh, 4 was a great move for Matty, I think. And as Turds is saying, just felt under a ton of pressure, kind of one of those spots where you're looking for ties. Yeah, I've definitely been there. Um, where you miss a win because you feel like you're on the back foot. And it can be especially difficult because I don't know for sure, but I strongly suspect Turds thought he was way ahead after 6, 2, 8, 9, and 6, and suddenly this move lands in 4, and Addy's remaining cards are just fantastic. And, you know, given the power of those cards, and suddenly, like, you start looking at moves and they're not tying anymore, um... You're, you're seeing losses everywhere when you were expecting to be seeing lines trying for a win. I think it's very easy to um, find a tie and be happy with it. And it is also just difficult to calculate with Elemental on. I know some players are more attuned to it than others, but I, I do think it is difficult. And I did not calculate it correctly. Because I, I just totally missed that 8962 had the plus an 8. Which is, admittedly, not an elemental thing, but one of the main things I've noticed with elemental causes is I start missing stuff I'd normally see as I focus on elementals. 
And I think that's sort of a sign that I haven't automated some stuff in my head as well as I should. Because there's sort of um, levels of knowledge to something. Uh, this is talked about in a bunch of fields, but I tend to run across it in chess. Of kind of like level one knowledge. Or I guess let's call it level zero. But there's sort of four stages of it. So the first stage is you don't know something and you don't know that you don't know it, right? And you're just completely oblivious to it and all your actions have nothing to do with it. If you do happen to have an action that aligns with it, it is completely by chance, you know, it is, there is no uh, effect that gets you there. And then the next stage is you don't know something and you are aware you don't know it. And this makes it more possible to work on. You at least like, it is a weakness that exists. I think this is where a lot of um, kind of cliches around around the more knowledge you have, the more you know there is stuff to know, the more you're able to identify places you don't know things. I think that cliche is a little overused, but there is certainly truth to it, and I think this gets at that same truth. Uh, then the third stage is you know something is there like you you um so we did you don't know what it is and you don't know it like you just have no connection to it and then the next stage was you know what the thing is but you're not able to do it and then stage three is you know what it is and you're able to do it but you're doing it is very conscientious right you have to be conscientiously thinking about it to execute it it takes a lot of work to do um, you have to really like make sure and I think a lot of times when I go like you know I should think more about this what I mean is I need to include this as something like in my kind of checklist of things to think about in a position more often than I do or you know because I don't inherently see the kind of cues or reasons to do a move type I have to just start considering it out of the blue because otherwise I'll never start thinking about it. So I have to sort of force myself to think about it, make a conscientious effort to try to make it work. And the fourth stage of knowledge is when you know how to do something and you don't have to think about it, you've essentially automated it. And that is the most powerful by far because in any game as complex as this, it is of course incredibly useful to automate as much as you can because then you have more time to think about all the other tricky stuff. And it's not like, like in chess, I think some people hear this and start thinking, oh, you just make every move automatically. No, it means you have understandings of pawn structures and other stuff that gives you a lot of clues to the position and you don't have to work those out every time. You can start thinking about the calculations that are still complex that result from understanding all those things. And the more automated you have the basic to advanced stuff, the more time you have for the really, really hard stuff, right? The more your brain is left open, the more you can use time on the clock for that. And I think when Elemental happens, and this happened in my match against Zelda too, especially game one, where I just missed he had set up a plus and four. I also missed an element, but that's different because I certainly don't have Elemental stuff automated at all in my head. But I started missing, I've missed some pluses and sames that I probably shouldn't miss. And occasionally you do. And thus, it is wholly possible I am overrating the impact. All right, he doesn't have time for another game. I'm going to finish babbling. Um, but, uh, sorry, getting distracted by chat. It is possible to overrate an effect because you have a bias to noticing it in certain circumstances, and then you don't notice all the times it happens in others, and actually it happens at the same rate. But because you only notice it in one instance, like you overrate that one happening. This happens all the time. I may be doing this. Uh, I certainly often have. Though, because I'm aware of the bias, I do try to uh, adjust for it. But, uh, okay. I think I miss basic pluses and sames more, especially pluses, not, not really so much sames, more when Elemental is on, because it sort of muddies my vision of what's going on. And it sort of takes a step back in the layer of thinking. And I think that makes it tricky. And I suspect that happens for lots of other people too. And it 
means I should have a, like a better feel for pluses, right? Like that's not something that I think should drop off just because the vision is muddied or there's something new to worry about, but it is. And yeah, that's something to potentially work on. So that's it for uh, for the uh, the turd spike match for today. They will try to find another time to play. Really good game. Um, I think Addy's move in four was really good, but I do think it was losing if turds had found the three and then eight move order rather than eight and then three. I think Addy's hand had a bunch of weaknesses and turds did a pretty good job exploiting it. But Addy also did a very good job playing to its strengths, as seen in the move in four. A move can be losing and still, I think, be a really good move. I think four was practically excellent. Really interesting game. Uh, so we're going to be getting Delta Bowl later today. You won't, because I will publish these different days, but I will, so I'm pretty excited. And uh, hope you enjoyed that game. I certainly did. Can we end the recording?